Uh, if you're not familiar with the maker movement, it's a movement that's going across the country. And it really started to develop because people started uh, making hacker spaces and maker spaces. And they started sharing information and open source about like how to do a, a bunch of different methods from 3D printing to uh, programming and electronics, robotics, uh, woodworking, uh, fibers. It's, it's just all these different methods of making. Um, this is like a typical uh, maker space and what's really interesting about the maker space is that not only is it geared towards the hobbyists of like the adults, but it also is geared towards education of children too. And so it gets it, kids really interested in making stuff. I know when I was a kid, uh, I was at Science Olympia, I built rockets. Uh, I did all these different kinds of things. I won an adventure contest in fifth grade, and uh, uh, that led me to like programming. I started building my own websites when I was 12. I used JavaScript, and getting kids an interest in technology brings them to that level where they want to be engineers, they want to be programmers, they want to uh, create these really interesting uh, electronics. So uh, this summer, I got hired by um, the Maker Education Initiative. So I'm working at the Omaha Children's Museum and I'm developing programs for children, teaching them electronics and how to use, uh, you know, how to solder something, you know, basic, basic um, tools to really get them interested in science. And uh, it, it's kind of run by um, Make Magazine, if you're familiar with them. Uh, but they have really interesting projects. Uh, they have maker fairs across the United States. And I actually went to one this summer, Maker Fair Kansas City. And I've been to a lot of conventions because I'm a huge dork. You know, I love I love anime conventions, I love sci-fi conventions. So I was like, oh yeah, Maker Fair. It's gonna be like a big open, you know, but with like, you know, 3D printing and all this other stuff. Well, when I went there, I was actually surprised because I've never been in an environment like this before. I saw people who were LARPing uh, at park <laughs> next to people who pimp out their rides. Like these two subcultures that are like completely different were interacting with each other and sharing information. Like you wouldn't think that these people, since they're so drastically different, would have anything in common. But since they all like use the same kind of tools, since they have this I want to create something. I want to make this sword for my LARPing <laughs> character. And this guy's like, well, I want to like put my ride out and put these cool like blinky lights or whatever. And you know, they share information. It was really interesting. And uh, you saw a lot of different projects here from people making their own vehicles, uh, diff different people making boards, uh, making their own 3D printers, like it was just a range of stuff that people were making and you know displaying. So you might be wondering, what does this have to do with JavaScript? Definitely consider you know JavaScript you know is more considered front end. You know it doesn't really have, you know people might not wonder what what does JavaScript have to do with it. Well, with uh, the kind of boards that they use, like the Adreno or the Raspberry Pi. Like, uh, because the, they are starting to use Node.js on these boards and a bunch of other projects. Like, if you uh, were probably the JS conference this year, they were actually making boats that were programmable. And it was kind of this introduction of how these coders could become makers. And not just that, it's because of this open, collaborative environment, people are figuring out how can JavaScript actually program robotics and like these other things that you know, was it really, you know, unless you do like, you know, uh, more like, you know, Linux and uh, C++ and, uh, you know, all these uh, things weren't really accessible to someone who just knew JavaScript or like, you know, HTML5 and now it's becoming way more access accessible. So um, I'm just going to show some of the, um, Do you command tab? Okay, command tab. Oh, I want hold hold down command. Yeah, there you go. Is it coming up? Nope. Oh, it's on there. Yes. Oh, it's on there. Yeah. It's not mirrored. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, okay. So uh, here's a here's a um. Yeah, so this was uh, um, this was uh, using Node.js, uh, someone programmed this uh, robot that was able to play soccer, which was really cool. So there's that, and then, how do I get Oh, sorry. Is that right here? And then this person using a watch would program this ball. <laughs> and this is with it. this is with JavaScript. This is stuff you can do with JavaScript. And then this one is my probably my favorite. This is a if you're familiar with the drone helicopters, this guy programmed this copter using JavaScript driven. So it's pretty amazing what people are doing right now. And then uh, if you're wondering how you can get into this, there's tons and tons of uh, resources online. Uh, this is just using the Adreno with Node.js. Uh, and uh, this is just a kit showing you, you know, simple projects you can get, you know, tip your toes into uh, this entire movement. started uh, there's a, a local maker group here and uh, um, they they meet uh, on Saturdays they also have a Twitter account and uh, they're doing a lot of interesting projects too and we're also having a mini maker fair in September 13th 2014 uh, we're still looking for people to uh, present projects so if you've already been doing projects like this or you've been kind of thinking of dabbling in it it might be a good way to meet other people who are doing it too. So uh, that's about it. So yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you guys have any questions or anything? Uh, can you tell me more about the Mini Maker Fair? Oh, uh, the Mini Maker Fair is sponsored by the Omaha Makers Group and University of Nebraska, and uh, just like the Kansas City uh, Maker Fair. It's, uh, uh, it's going to be where people could show their projects, uh, show what they're doing. Uh, they're, I, I don't know if they're going to have vendors, but vendors can show the kind of stuff they're doing, like 3D printers. Like when I went to the Kansas City one, I saw a 3D printer that printed upside down. Like it's kind of crazy what they're kind of doing with technology right now. And it's kind of like that collaborative environment where people are sharing information and showing the kind of different projects that they're doing. Um, the Mini Maker Fair um, is, this is the first one Omaha is, it actually has, and actually Kansas City started as a Mini Maker Fair. Usually the Mini Maker Fair is like a tiptoe into like the whole doing fairs there, and then once there's a, a good attendance rate and stuff like that, and then it gets bigger that, that they actually have the Maker Fair. So a mini one is like supporting the Maker the whole maker movement and everything like that. So it's actually pretty interesting. Um, hopefully we'll get a lot of attendance and we're going to have some really awesome, awesome projects that people are going to share, so yeah. Anyone else? Are there any advantages of using Node.js for microcontrollers? What is it? Are there any advantages of using Node.js? Oh, uh, there's actually a couple. It's not just Node.js. It, uh, they use Cyclone GS. There's a couple different uh, different uh, GS things that they use to kind of like you know program whatever. Um, actually, um, if you there's some really interesting articles. Uh, definitely, if you look at the JS conference, since a lot they have a lot of details about how to get into it. They have like uh, different uh, JS. 
that they use like Node or Cyclone and stuff like that. And then they showed, um, they actually have code for you because it's such an open uh, environment and it's all about your know, collaboration. You can find, you know, stuff, uh, you can find code at GitHub and stuff like that where it tells you how to start your own project and then how you can improve on that project. So this is a good way to start. So yeah. Anybody else? Can you tweet a link to the website about that at Nebraska JS tonight? Yeah, I can. Cool. Yeah, for sure. So Friday, there was, for those of us who aren't opposed to going to Lincoln, there was actually a Maker Faire yeah. Friday. Uh, I live in Lincoln, so. Yeah, Jason, uh, Jason, who I work with, uh, I work with two other people. We all got hired by the magazine, Jason and uh, Joe. Uh, Jason actually went to the Lincoln one. Uh, he really liked it a lot, but I, his biggest complaint that was that there wasn't really that many hobbyists. It was mostly, uh, like a research level work? Was, I think it was the first time. Yeah, it was yeah. Pretty good for first time. I mean, it got the idea out there. Um, but furthermore, and it was too hot. That was the other Oh, thing. yeah. Um, but, uh, and the home group club helped that out. But, uh, <laughs> good point. <laughs> UNL has a, a maker group as well that they, it is not strictly through UNL, so the public can join. Yeah, UNL. yeah, and he said it was really good for our first time too, so he's really hoping that, you know, as it grows more, more hobbyists will join, because like, he said it was really cool to see the research ones, he just wished there was more hobbyists, because uh, I know when I went to Kansas City, the most interesting projects to me were like the people who like sat in their garage and created like these really interesting projects, and like, uh, um, a lot of the people that you'll be at like these maker fairs are like, oh, we're going, we're trying to do a Kickstarter, so and so. So you're kind of like seeing it before they go to Kickstarter and have these projects. So that's the most interesting to me. I mean, uh, uh, the research level ones are pretty cool too, but they're they're funded by you know grants and like education, so they're a little bit different. It's just cool to see how me as an everyday person with you know not the same access to the same kind of uh, tools could like make something super amazing. You know, just from uh, the and what's great about the maker uh, fair too, and just the whole maker movement is it's about using technology for everybody. So I think that's what I really love. It's it's about making technology cheaper and more accessible to anyone to really learn and really uh, get into these kind of technology fields that were kind of hard to get into because of the price point. So. That's what I find really interesting too. So hopefully, you know, as time goes by, everybody will have a three D printer in their home and <laughs> and um, be doing robotics. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks, yeah. Shelley. Okay. Thanks.